Hey, what's up? It's Mike Hill Metal, and this is my new launcher system, the Delta 6 Heavy. And I'm going to be launching Elu Station because this is going to be a mission to Elu to grab some science. And we have liftoff of the Delta 6 Heavy carrying Elu Station on its way to pick up science and house Kerbals for the next couple of years. And as you can see, I'm using probe control room again. And I've got the screen set up so that it shows a bunch of outside views on the main monitors. Starting the gravity turn, about to watch separation of the liquid fuel boosters. There we go. Now we're down to the main uh, single first stage. As you can see, the little camera in the bottom right corner of the screen is the uh, payload camera. It's a little dark right now, but uh, and we're getting up there. About to have second stage or first stage burnout. Sorry, and second stage separation and ignition. There goes the payload fairings. And as the engine burns out, you can see a great view of Kerbin. I'm going to turn the ship around in a second so you can get a better look at it. That looks awesome. And if you can see the... Uh, the uh, GUI or whatever the UI flickering on and off it's because I'm taking uh, screenshots for Imgur or whatever however you pronounce it whatever anyways here we go getting set up for our uh, circularization burn lose that stage And this is the burn straight out towards Elu. A regular engine as opposed to a nuclear one for once. And probe control room gave out just as I was entering the sphere of influence on Elu, so I had to deal with this and this is the last of the burnout for the uh, ELU station as it circularizes. Here it is in orbit, waiting for the Kerbals to make their way here. And this is the the landing system, which got a little got off to a little bit of a rocky start because the launch clamps got to a little bit too much of a hold on the bottom of them. But uh, yeah, it's going to head on up to orbit. There's a separation of the boosters. We go with third stage step. And circularizing. I didn't want to use too much of this fuel, but I realized that I did have some left over in orbit of Elu, and I did have another tanker that I left there from an earlier mission. So I do have enough fuel already in orbit of Elu, so I could refuel. And I'm going to point this north and south. And open the shield. And now I'm going to launch the, the vehicle, the uh, Kerbals. And this is going to be done mostly IVA. Got all the screen set up so he gets all of his information correctly. You can see the fuel going down at a nice set, uh, steady pace. Going through the clouds. Gravity turn. Going through the high altitude clouds, thanks to Astronomer. First stage booster separation. If you can see the orbital screen in the bottom right. No, I'm moving it around now. There you go. Nice view out the window.
Astronomer's visual pack make th makes this game look so awesome. I think next video I'm going to do a mission to a probe mission to Eve, and that it trust me it looks so awesome. Get some more nice views out the window. Take some more screenshots. I'm going to time warp up to circularization burn. There you go. With 5% fuel left in the liquid fuel stage. And this is coming into Elu for the burn. And like I've said before, I do use MechJeb for the interplanetary stuff because it's a lot more precise. It's easier to set up the notes that way. I'm going to fold that in just because I don't really need it. I got enough uh, RTGs on the side. Thought this was a nice camera angle. And coming into Elu Station to dock with this. I'm going to park this right here. Get, kill all the lateral velocity, or the relative velocity, sorry. And go EVA. Put one guy in the lander. And he's going to fly that to dock it. And this is going to back away and come in nice and close. I hit it a little bit fast, so it kind of wobbled. And I also realized that as I was docking it, I forgot to put uh, SAS on the ELU station, so it was kind of wibbly wobbly and weird. So, we're going to take some more screenshots and transfer the fuel over to the lander. Bring, and I brought the tanker over so I can add more fuel to the lander and the return stage. Get that docked. All the docking is manually. Uh, some of the flying is uh, mech job, but the landing itself is going to be manual, so you see that. And I had plenty of fuel. This thing's full. And I'm trying to land on that patch directly underneath me right now, that little kind of brownish patch. So I used a little bit of the RCS first, just to get a little bit of an extra kick. Just want to kill all the lateral velocity and then bring it in nice and slow. I'm going to, I'm going to cut away just to save some time. Or maybe not. No, oh, actually, I didn't, I didn't cut away this time. Just to prove that I did all this in one take. Bring it in nice and slow. Do some science on the way down. Throttle up just a little bit, slow her down. And I kind of hit a little bit fast, but nothing breaks, so we're good. Little bit of litho breaking, but whatever. Do a bunch of science, and then we're going out on EVA. I did not put a uh, ladder on there because I knew that I could use the thruster packs for that. So I'm gonna stand out here, take some pictures, and then I'm going to grab Haddis, and he's going to step on out there with Patsy after he plants a flag. We didn't go splat. And then do some uh, science, get some surface samples and EVA report. I'm going to take the other guy, put him out there, and they're going to take a picture with all the planets. <laughs> take a tumble. <laughs> and they're going to take a picture with all the planets and the sun in the background. There you go. And they're going to get back inside. If they can grab the lighter. <laughs> and they're going to take off right back up towards uh, towards the station.
I didn't worry about launch timing or anything. I just wanted to launch. And it, as it turns out, I launched pretty much at the same time that I needed to. Just going to try and keep this as level as possible. And then bring it in for docking finally. Once I got it in there. I wanted to cut out as much as I could because I've seen it before and just needed to save time. Bring it in for the docking. There we go. And transfer the fuel over to the return stage. And then put our guys in here. After they had gone into the uh, science laboratory and refined the science. And now they're getting ready for the return trip. And close the shield after they get separation. Here's the return burn, which was about 2,500 or so meters per second. I don't know if I timed it right, but that's what it ended up being. And this is the inclination correction, which is going to take us down to get the periapsis close to reasonable, so I don't have to make too much of a giant adjustment. And just skip to the end of that. And we're going to time warp into Kerbin. Hopefully not into the planet, but you get my point. And I'm going to let Mech Jeb kind of even this out a little bit and then set it up to for the periapsis to be at about 26 kilometers up. If you looked closely, you could have seen a little bit of the uh, auroras under the South Pole. And as you can see, we're coming in at about 5 kilometers a second. So this is going to be pretty, uh, pretty heavy. 5 Gs. 7 G's. Never really got higher than 7 G's. That's pretty good. That's tolerable. And you can see the moon and Minmus in the background. And the second part, or the detached part of this, is flying by at probably still about 4 kilometers a second. And we pop the chutes once I go subsonic. There we go. And I ended up getting about 3,400 science. And that's about it.